Why don't we begin, Edemius, uh, by your telling us a bit about your background, both uh, personal and professional. Okay. You know, I was born in Addis Ababa in 1946, February 1946. And my family is, uh, you know, my father was uh, a Korean veteran. Uh, and uh, they, I was brought up in Addis Ababa. And then after finishing uh, traditional school, which is more or less religious school, I joined the Tefari Makon School in 1944-55 academic year. Uh, I was in grade two then. I was admitted to grade two after taking exam. You know the multiplication tables, mm -hmm. addition, subtraction, addition, subtraction, and the multiplication and division. This was the exam that we had. So um, I passed the exam, and then. My first class was grade two, and it was it used to be called two C. Uh, my brother joined two B, and a friend of mine two A, and then uh, and the first teacher of the of the class, the master of the of the class was a certain Mr. Ababa, a very a very stern, very serious guy. Uh, in fact, I was a bit uh, afraid of uh, joining the school and. Uh, you know, the compound was very strange. I came right from the village, so uh, it was quite uh, very uh, exciting at the same time, uh, full of anxiety. And anyway, so that's how it happened. And then I finished through elementary school. Uh, the, uh, I passed the elementary school exam. Then I was admitted to the high school, the same in the same school, at the, the secondary section of the high school, that is uh, from 9 to 12. And then passed through grade 12, I took the ESLC exam. I qualified to join the university, uh, whatever faculty I, I chose. But because the law school was then a new establishment, it was only three years old by the time I graduated from high school. Uh, I was persuaded by uh, the, uh, the, the son of my godfather, who was the first uh, student of law school, so that I can join the law school. Uh, and so uh, I decided to, to apply f to be admitted to the law school, and I was promptly admitted. I had the, uh, the the grade necessary to qualify to join the, the School of Law. And it was uh, established by uh, American professors, and uh, the Ford Foundation provided the fund to establish the school, the law school. Uh, it was a really uh, uh, very impressive law school. It was uh, very well qualified professors from America and from in Britain, France. Uh, Sweden, as I remember, and Belgium as well. Uh, so it was uh, a total of six years program uh, with uh, so-called an internship by the end of the of the of the academic uh, uh, studies. And then I, I graduate, graduated in 1971 with an LLB. Oh, and so then you became uh, an I joined. Then. You were yes. a full-fledged attorney. In 1971. Yes, 71. Right. Yes, I was an attorney for the commercial bank in 1971. And then I worked for five years in the, at the commercial bank, and then I joined the Ministry of Health and the allied associated uh, organizations of the Ministry of Health, including the WHO, UNICEF, PharmaCorp, ENI, you know, I'm just using the, the abbreviations for these institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally, uh, the government instructed, uh, ordered me rather to join the Minister of uh, Health and Agroindustries, then the then communist regime, you know. It would, uh, you simply, they would place you wherever, wherever they like, uh, whether you like it or not. So in any way, 
Uh, that was a new ministry. I was selected to go and, uh, and organize and head the, le the legal department of the ministry, which had about six or seven corporations under it. It's both agricultural and agro-industrial corporations. Uh, it was a vast uh, institution in any way. I worked there for about 10 years. Uh, and then uh, finally I was pensioned off. So I, I started my legal practice for a, a couple of years and then, I, then finally I came to the United States. I worked uh, with uh, there's a small um, Italian law firm uh, established here. Uh, so I, I worked there for some time. And then I also joined as a law clerk, you see, in this country, as a law clerk with uh, a certain legal firm in uh, Virginia. I worked there for some time, and then I quit. I quit, and uh, uh, then I moved back to Ethiopia after uh, staying here for uh, about 17, 18 years. And then uh, now I'm just... Uh, uh, on a pension and I'm living, uh, I'm just having a, it's just a total retirement now uh, with my pension and mostly I live in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, but I come here every now and then for a couple of months. What got you into uh, doing this book? Uh, why did you undertake writing uh, reminiscences of TMS? Okay, okay, thank Tell you. us about just, that. Just before that, you see, about my education, I'm sorry. Then after graduating law school, I had attended uh, uh, legal uh, training programs in India and in Italy uh, for international development law or international development law. Three times I had gone and uh, had these specialities. Uh, so just to add to the information about my, my educational background, in any way, to come back to your question of what prompted me to, to write this, this uh, uh, reminiscence. reminiscence. Yes, you were enjoying a very nice retirement and suddenly your uh -huh, Yeah, okay, absolutely. Book. Okay. Now, now look, uh, that's a good question actually. Uh, I see, as I pointed out in that book, uh, I started uh, drafting this, uh, this, uh, this memoirs, in 19... Uh, 82, during the dirt period in 1982, uh, it, it, it was really a very, very boring, it was a very, very hostile period then. So I just wanted to run away from uh, that atmosphere. So I started uh, reminiscing about the good old days, you know, during the time of Haile Selassie and the early things. So. What prompted me was, you see, I had a small draft of, uh, of uh, my memoirs in English as soon as I graduated from high school. That was 1964-65. Uh, I, I, just, I just found it suddenly in, in the shelf. You know, when I read it, I said, oh, my God, why don't I write, I write this thing in detail? And in the first place, it will be an escape from... Uh, from that boring time. Secondly, that school had an impression on me. Uh, it's so deep impression. Probably, uh, let me say that uh, my grandfather was also a teacher in that school. Uh, oh. Yeah, he was a teacher in that school. In fact, uh, Mr., uh, the picture of uh, uh, Hoyt Smith uh, that he had drawn of a priest uh, is my grandfather's picture. Yeah. Oh. So it was uh, it was placed in the school, but uh, during the revolution they took it down. I don't know why. <laughs> it's very sad. <laughs> and anyway, probably the presence of my grandfather in the school as a teacher might have contributed to this. But in any way, as I said before, I'm very nostalgic about past events, especially events that occurred that happened prior to the. Uh, the, what is called the revolution. Uh, so uh, these, these were nice days, these were sweet days. So no wonder that uh, people like to write about nice days, beautiful days. Uh, that was a therapy, you know. And I also wanted to share 
this uh, to remind people of the beautiful that, that we had, that's for our current generation and for future generation as well. Uh, so, um, uh, as I said, uh, it's nostalgia. I'm very nostalgic about past events, whether they are painful or sweet. But, uh, you know, pre-1974, period was beautiful. So, I said, let me write down, let me put down in writing so that future generations might, might be able to, uh, to understand what happened in the, edu to the educational system of the country uh, and the situation that, uh, that existed in socially in the town of Addis Ababa. Uh, I have also included some, uh, some story about uh, what Addis Ababa looked like then and the people, the, the way of life of the people, their psyche and their culture and everything, the holidays. So I had included also in that uh, little book. Uh, I must add something here. Uh, this, uh, this memoir of TMS is only a portion of the larger one. The larger one includes all my reminiscences about from early childhood up to the eruption of the revolution in 1974. Uh, uh, so it is part of the memoirs which covers 28 years. Uh, but for TMS, I just uh, took off this part, which talks about TMS uh, for publishing purposes. But that one is for the generations to come. So it's the larger coverage, uh, uh, which I really am very happy to have written about. Because when I give copies to my old colleagues, and even so to the, coming gen to the younger generation, they are fascinated about, about it, and I'm very glad about it in a way. Well, so let me understand. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a, uh, a shorter book that is the one we're talking about. Yes. That, but that's part of a, a much larger memoir you have. Absolutely. You have written. So yes. uh, we can look forward to other books mm -hmm. from you. Is that right? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I, I love that thing so much, <laughs> and I, I want to, sh to share it with others. So I think the next uh, move will be to uh, to have this thing published, uh, you know, the larger one. Uh, that's my, my next step. And that's hopefully next step. <laughs> it will be translated in English uh, so that many people might share, you know, this, uh, you know, as as, as that as information and, uh, you know, about the API and Addis Ababa especially, about the API. Um, uh, so it will be very interesting. Uh, it will be my next, the next step will be to, to have it published in the, the larger one. But the book we're talking about now, mm -hmm. um, Reminiscences of PMS, you yes. wrote in Amharic, right? Yes. So you might... There might be an English version someday, but the, the one that's um, coming out now is an Amharic yes. version. Now, before we talk a little more about the contents of uh -huh. the book, uh, let me ask you a, a question. Uh, what, what did you love most about TMS? What gave what you I the greatest most joy and the greatest story. pleasure? Okay. Yes. Okay? Oh, you see, the first and foremost thing that comes into my mind is the teachers, Ethiopian as well as Canadian teachers and uh, staff. I say that because the teachers, when I compare them with the current teachers in Ethiopia, these were especially the TMS teachers were highly disciplined, highly committed. The administration was, was highly committed to, for the improvement of the school for the quality of the school and for the discipline of the students. Uh, as you might well know that the school did, was not an co-education school. It was only for boys. There were no girls before. Right. Okay. And uh, the administration was uh, led by uh, the Jesuit, um, Canadian Jesuits. Uh, these, these people were absolutely dedicated to that school so that the Ethiopian teachers also followed their example 
and they were ded dedicated for that school, and they wanted to create a real good citizens, disciplined, highly educated citizens, morally strong citizens. This was the, the dedication, the concern, and the, uh, as you might well know, the standard of education, the quality of education was really high Very as compared high. to many other high schools and elementary schools as well. And so this was a result of the dedication of the staff and teachers of the school. So I have, I have really, I have great respect for all those teachers and the Canadian Jesuit, the Canadian administrators and teachers as well. Um, so that impressed me very much. Why did these people have to, especially the expatriates, you know, why did they have to dedicate themselves to this school? You know, it's, it's really beyond one's imagination. Their dedication is absolute, which means it also includes the ethical teachers because the Canadians were an exemplary, uh, were exemplary in this respect. Uh, even, even the other staff, you know, like, uh, the um, physical laborers, uh, gardeners, uh, and these, these were really, really educated, uh, um, dedicated. So, so that the Tafari Mekon School was a world by itself. It was what about a world, a world uh, by itself. Hermes. Yes. What about socially? It was Tafari Mekon for you a very enjoyable experience we know it's academically yes yes, with yes. High quality socially you, enjoy it you see social? this school had as you said you know the the school compound is so is so beautiful the sports activities the cultural theatrical activities and the students coming from various parts of Addis Ababa in terms of class very rich students for, for students from very rich families students from very poor families and students from the middle class. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it was a reflection of society. All the students reflected what the society looked like. And uh, so of, of, of different backgrounds, uh, from the military, from the priesthood, from the bureaucracy, and from the big, big uh, land, landowners, you know, what they call the feudal landlords, uh, including even uh, the grandson of uh, the emperor, was also our classmate, for example, my, in grade seven. He was my classmate. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, the, the cross-section of society can be reflected there. Uh, and so the students, is the same thing. We had the same transaction. I come from, uh, well, uh, you might call it a middle-class family. Uh, my father was uh, a military officer. Uh, military officer, uh, so we are fine uh, in terms of uh, living standard, but we had a cross-section of the entire uh, society, um, and so, uh, and secondly, secondly, that school, as I said, is a, a world in itself, it had its own culture, it has its, its own activities, uh, and the, the administration of the school uh, wanted us to, to, to create that fraternity among, among ourselves, you see. Uh, after all, we are the boss of Tafari Mokonen. That was the, the, the slogan, you know, if you remember. <laughs> after all, we are the boss of Tafari Mokonen. So that created bondage among students who have, who have passed through this, uh, this experience in the school. So, so I say um, uh, this also contributed to my interest in that school and, it's, uh, and, and so, and hence, that prompted me to write something about it. It sounds like you had a wonderful experience. Yes, absolutely. A very absolutely. rich experience. Now, let's turn back to the book, uh -huh. uh, Reminiscences of TMS, and tell us just a bit more about how you organized okay. the contents of the book. Tell us a bit about oh, what right. you might call the table of contents. Uh, mm -hmm. No, okay. the table of contents. I just, it's in chronological order. Chronological order in a sense, the first day of the school. And then uh, about each class of the school I attended, from grade two up to A, for example, the elementary section, that school, each and every class I attended, grade two, grade three, sections, the different sections, 
about the teachers of those sections, about the students of those sections, about the subject matter of those sections, and the encounters we had, specific encounters vis-à-vis um, uh, uh, -vis, uh, our classmates, vis-à-vis -vis teachers, for example, about punishments, about some, some uh, you know, both scandals, about uh, achievements, uh, about successes and failures, and the consequences thereof. Uh, so that was the elementary section. Because elementary section were, were boys, were not teenagers, so were, the psyche and everything was quite different from high school. So first I treated the, first, the uh, elementary section, Okay. as I said, including the characters of teachers, the characters of some students, you know, there are certain unique characters of some students I include in there, and the, the uh, subject matters of the school, who taught what and what the subject matter was, and uh, some incidents that, um, that might have occurred uh, while uh, in the school, uh, while in classes. Uh, these things I just put down uh, for, for the elementary section. Now, after I completed the elementary section, I decided to say, okay, now I finished the elementary section. But this school being part of Addis Ababa, it's in Addis Ababa, and it's part of Addis Ababa, I said, why don't I simply write something, include something in the book with regard to the then Addis Ababa and its residents. Ah, so, okay. so the, after completing this high school elementary section, I started talking, uh, writing about what Addis Ababa looked like then. What were the uh, celebrations, uh, the holidays, um, the religious or, or otherwise, that is, and the style of living, uh, it's, it's very fascinating, the style of living of the, of the, of the people then, you know, even the, the way they, wear, they, they dress, even the, um, the cultural aspects of, uh, which are now dead, most, most uh, have been forgotten now, Luckily enough, I put them down in writing. Uh, the type of celebrations that we had about weddings, uh, about religious uh, processions, um, about about the traditional games for students, you know, for uh, for children I and mean, children games for children that traditional games for ch uh, that children were playing. Uh, so this I, I included, and 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 surprisingly. I also included a small chapter about the weather conditions that as it existed then. That is, especially the rainy season. It, it is a long vacation beginning from June to through September. This is a vacation this is a long vacation. During that long vacation there is this rainy season, which you may be surprised I love so much. In spite of the mud, the the running uh, water, rain, and everything, in spite of all these things, and the cold, my best favorite uh, section of the year was, to your surprise, surprise, is the rainy season uh, of June through August, uh, through September. When you uh, were also, actually on vacation, right? Yes, yes, yeah, on vacation. So, uh, during that vacation, the enjoyment that I had it's, it's at its highest level. Why? Because it's a long vacation with my, with my colleagues in the village. We, make so many, we, we play, you have so many uh, things to do, to play. And at the same time, we just are work, we have ample uh, opportunity to walk around the village. And uh, during that rainy season, to live a part of the, the life of uh, the people there. See, the small markets, uh, the shops, uh, and, and I said uh, uh, the, uh, the social aspect, the entire social aspect of uh, Addis Ababa life during the rainy season, and of course including the, the dry season as well. But the rainy season was, for me, it was, it was the best part of the year, so I, I wrote in detail about what it looked like when I was a child, when I was a small boy, 
and uh, a student of Teferi Mokonen. So you go beyond TMS to the wider environment in uh, Abbas Ababa. Would you, you repeat the question, please, uh, or the point? You, you talk about the context, the wider environment, uh -huh. not just yes. the school, right? Yes, yes, I'm talking about it. Uh, because, um, uh, I, because I said to myself, I'm talking about TMS, I'm writing about TMS, but TMS has existed in the Zen Addis Ababa. So I said, what did that same Addis Ababa in which TMS, uh, about which I'm writing, what did that same Addis Ababa in which Tafari Mokon is located look like? Right. So I said, okay, that, that's nice. Let me, let me uh, describe the, the town in which our loved one school TMS is located. So I just linked it that somehow, you know, this is a linkage between between the, the the town, the people of the town and the school. Where the where the where uh, and the school uh, in, in which this um, uh, of the uh, of the of the school which uh, which is located in that small town of Addis Ababa. Now, I assume so that, you no, also I just, go uh, on. Let, let me write down there. Yeah. I assume you also go on in the book to talk about the secondary. Okay. Section now, and, yes, uh, the secondary section. The the secondary section. Good. Thank you. The secondary section. You see, it is the culture of the students has changed. One, because we are now teenagers. Uh, uh, the educational system is completely different, as you uh, we are aware. And how is it? Because when I joined the grade nine, we were told by the teachers of grade nine, you are no more, there is no more spoon, spoon feeding. That's what Mr. Baudry, I remember him, that's what he said. Mr. Baudry was a scout master also. Uh, I'm sure you must have, uh, you must have known him. Uh, I knew him well. He was a wonderful yes, yes. man. He said there, there is no more spoon feeding <laughs> once you are a secondary school student. He, so he built self-confidence in us uh, to be self-confident. He helped us feel self-confident. And, and as, he, as he said it, it was more or less like lecture come uh, putting down it, um, in, writing it on the blackboard. Uh, and then, uh, so it's just like a uh, more or less like, uh, you know, uh, lecturing, uh, lectures, providing lectures, and you put down the, the notes in your own language. Um, the uh, mathematics and science teach the teachings were also from, uh, had a different curriculum. It didn't follow the uh, normal curriculum of the other high schools in Addis Ababa. Uh, because the Canadians, uh, I think it was an American system, I think, if I'm not, I'm not quite sure about it. But in any way, the uh, the uh, the high school education was really a ch very challenging one, very challenging in a sense. You see, when we joined uh, uh, grade nine, uh, other students came from other elementary schools. You know, they also have only up to grade eight. So those students who had very good grades were were assigned to attend Safari Mokon School, and we also. We came from high school, from the elementary section, and grade nine we had, I think, as far as I remember, about four classes, A, B, C, D, and we had about 150 students uh, total, grade nine, when we joined the secondary section. You know, by the time we, 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 we ended up in grade 12, we were only 42 out of 150. Mm. So there were a lot of dropouts, because the passing mark was 60% as opposed to 50% in other places, in other schools. 60% plus the standard of education was very high. So the high school was really, really challenging. Many students had to drop or to be dismissed, to be dismissed from the school. Others joined other schools because they wanted to, to make an easy pass, you know, with 50% pass. Uh, so um, it was a real challenging thing and uh, no wonder that by the time uh, Students got the ESLC exam, for example, in, in my time, no, no, not a single student failed the ESLC exam. They all passed. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was really funny. It's very well for the school. Yes, yes. So, we have, you know, we give great credit for that school. 
Number two, number two, you know, this is a time of adolescence, this is a teenager, and this and that. Then you then start having a first year behavior is different. Uh, <laughs> but the Canadians really, really uh, did everything possible to maintain discipline uh, among the high school students. Let me tell, let me say something about how much they go. One day, for example, uh, it's an anecdote. Uh, it's an anecdote. Uh, one day, for example, I was uh, carrying a book uh, in the school, and that book was about, uh, you know, uh, um, it, it the, um, how do you call it, the cowboys, about cowboys. You know, the cowboys in, uh, in Texas. Uh, so one teacher, a certain Mr. Gagne, Gagne, saw me holding that book. He just checked, what, what book are you carrying? I, I, showed, I showed him. No, no, that, 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 you don't need that book. So he just took it away from me, and he gave me a book by Somerset Mom, a very, very uh, philosophical book to read. So to this extent, the discipline was so severe, because, you know, reading, uh, reading about cowboys, cowboys, he felt <laughs> this would be divert students from nice discipline and education. So, so that was, that was um, the dedication of the... Of the uh, administration of the school and the staff of the school as well. So it continued. And then, as I said, it was very challenging to be to successfully complete uh, high school in four years. Some of them uh, finished it in five years. Others didn't make it, they were dismissed. So it was an achievement uh, when we, we sat for the ESLC exam finally. And then, as I said, we all passed. And then, came a very interesting part. Uh, the, for the first time, the students wanted to have a graduation party in the school. A graduation party? Yes. It was unheard of. Before, before our, our, our class, the students finished off uh, grade 12, and then they went back to their places, that's all. But now, there was an idea of having a graduation party uh, the graduation party was, uh, what made it uh, a bit strange was, uh, in the graduation party, the students, some of the students wanted to have girls included in the party, you know, Girl. to dance. You yeah, well, I think that sounds nice, don't you? Yeah, but, but you know, <laughs> you know what happened? We uh, went to the director of the school, Mr. G the, the, the assistant director, Mr. Gagno, we said we wanted to have a party in the, school, in, the, in the school. He said, okay, okay, that's quite possible. Why not? I would be very glad. But we have to tell him, I think uh, our party is going to have, you know, these Western songs, and girls are also invited for the party. He said, no. In that compound, I, will, I won't allow uh, girls to dance with you in that school. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't provide you the, uh, the party room, okay? So we said, no, whatever, whatever it is, we'll rent some place outside of the, of the school and uh, have that, that party. So we had, uh, we organized ourselves, and then we moved to a certain club. We found a certain club. It was a day party, actually, uh, club, and we invited girls from the Itagaman uh, school, and they came in droves. Because they, they always had a good impression about uh, about Tamis, so uh, it was uh, you know many of the students of, of our of our classmates were did not feel comfortable you know about uh, having uh, to to sit down with girls and having uh, to dance with with girls. So <laughs> most of them were timid, <laughs> uh, and uh, it was very funny. Uh, the, the party was not as lively as we expected because, including myself, I mean, I, I was not that uh, bold enough to, to approach the girl and say, let's, let's dance together. <laughs> <laughs> but some of them did manage, you know, about uh, three or four students, some of them managed. But the others, they just sat there, uh, there on uh, their chair and listened to, to the music and doing nothing. <laughs> and the girl well, was just sitting down there and uh, watching us, that's all. <laughs> Well, it sounds like a very, very interesting book, and uh, obviously very comprehensive. 
Now, tell me, what was it like writing the book? Is this your first book you've written for publication? Oh, it's my first book, really. It is How did it feel? Book. What was the experience like writing the book? Yeah, that was, in fact, you see, uh, they said this is uh, uh, just uh, a memoir. So when I started writing, I started to relieve, you know, that period. Really, it was so beautiful. Then the memoirs started flowing as I started writing. Then many uh, anecdotal uh, situations also cropped up. So it, it was a flood of uh, many, many events that I had co almost co forgotten that came up while I, while I began to, to write uh, about uh, my experience in Tafarimokon. So many of, of, uh, of uh, incidents came up. So I was really enjoying, I was reliving the past when I was writing this thing. Uh, so it was... Uh, it was such, such a beautiful experience. It was a very emotionally satisfying experience, right? Yes, yes. I, I'm emotionally satisfied. I'm emotionally attached to that school, the students, the events, the old days. I am, uh, you put it right, I'm emotionally and passionately attached to that. Was there anything difficult about it, or did it just flow? You just enjoyed Good, yes. doing it. You see, yeah, exactly. You see, after 1974, as far as I'm concerned, as far as many students are, many of my colleagues of my generation are concerned, it was very bitter life because of this, uh, the communist system. Right. The it was dark. When things are dark, you go back to the old days. Right. You know, you reminisce about the old days. I think it is only natural to do that because it has an, a therapeutic effect, I think. When you think about the good old days, the good old days, because you have the dark, bad days now. So, uh, when I was writing this thing, I was, as you said, compassionate, passionate, because of the uh, many things had changed by then. Many things had been had been crushed, and uh, uh, Ethiopia was 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 simply flesh and blood, no more soul. It didn't have a soul. So, instead of that soul, I had to go back. You see, it was simply uh, robotic. That was how it was. Uh, so I just, it's a dehumanizing system. I didn't like it. So to go back, to reminisce about the past, provided solace. It, it, gave, it gave some satisfaction, some happiness, and some, uh, you know, <laughs> for the mind, you know, it, it gave some, something, some therapy for the mind. It was a therapy for the mind. <laughs> so I really enjoyed writing about it. I really enjoyed writing about what looked, what society looked like then, how people, people's behaviors, people's hearts, uh, as opposed to what happened after this revolution. So, uh, in a sense, when I wrote this thing, it was also an escape from the, um, from the terrible situation, from the bad situation I was in during the dark. So it was an escape, I can say. Uh, so it, it has this effect, but now, uh, as I said, now it's gonna, we are going to share it with uh, the future, the coming, the younger generation. Um, so um, I'm very, very glad that I wrote about that uh, school's events, which 10 years of my, of my life then, and the larger, of course, one that's uh, up to 1974, that's uh, quite a different thing now. Now... If I understand correctly, Hermes, um, yes. the uh, Effady McConan School Alumni Association of North America will print and distribute this, this book, is that correct? Yes. So people who, who are interested in reading it, and I'm sure there will be many because it sounds like a wonderful book, will obtain copies from uh, the Alumni Association, TMS Alumni Association of North America. Uh -huh. Great. Yes. Now, you, you can, you, I, I, I think uh, it will be uh, next Saturday, you know, uh, there is uh, this uh, annual meeting. Yes. Yeah, the, the book will be Assembly. distributed then. And actually, uh, and uh, there is another guy, uh, Dr. Moges Gabramariam, 
They oh. have taken copies and they are really sending it to many of, uh, uh, of, of former KMA students throughout the United States, or even those who, 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 who they know. But I think they have thought about uh, uh, creating, there is a website, I think, and uh, they are going to, it will be reachable uh, by so many of the students who are spread all over the 50 states of the United States. As for the local um, one in Ethiopia, I have given so many copies to to a certain uh, friend of mine who would contact uh, the former students of KMS so they can pick it up and uh, you know and share the experience. Well, sir, I really appreciate your taking the time to tell us yes. about your new book, Reminiscences yes. of KMS. Um, and I think it's time for you to start on your second book. I Are hope I will do that. I <laughs> hope I will do that. Are yeah. you hard at work on your second book yet? Uh, yes, that is uh, uh, almost almost true. I, I have almost, uh, I, I, as I said, up to 1974. The, the one that said up to 1974, it's almost finished now. It's ready for. Uh, it will be ready for publication in uh, in four or five months time, at least. By oh September my gosh. October. You are becoming what we call a prolific author. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, sir, for, for well, your I'm nice remark. I'm very glad. I'm very proud. And, uh, Mr. Eddie, I really, I really appreciate your interest. Of course, you are a, a, a teacher of the school. Uh, I really have, have great appreciation for your interest in, uh, in, in my book and in that school. You are part of us, you are part of me. I am very, very glad in this, uh, in this. I'm grateful about your, the, the interest you have shown. I thank you very, very much for your patience, for your dedication, for your interest. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, I will see you someday and we will have a, uh, a chat with each other. And um, you are a member, you are, you are TMS, so I'm, I'm, so I, I'm very glad that I'm talking to the, I had an interview with a TMS person, and I'm very, very happy, very, and I thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Adam, yes, and I'm only sorry that um, I cannot be with you next week. Yeah, I heard that, yes. I will um, be with my daughter mm -hmm. in Portland, Oregon, and she, by the way, is an attorney. Oh, okay, she that's very nice indeed. And it's a long planned trip. I haven't seen her for a year, so I'm really looking forward to it. Well, I wish you well. Thank you. It's been wonderful talking with you. I uh, I know people will love to read your your reminiscences mm -hmm. of uh, the school we both love and remember yes. very fondly, Tuffet and McConnell School.